Hello YouTube, my name is Bowtied Media, and today I have a discussion video of sorts. It is currently, when I'm filming this, June 7th, this video is going to go up June 8th, and you know what July 4th is? Well, it's Independence Day for America, but it's also Monster Cat's 10 year anniversary, the 10th year since Cold Blood and Ice Cream Cones came out back in... 2011 and so this is going to be a big deal monster cat has done a ton in the past with their anniversaries and so this is going to kind of be speculation and discussion about what i think is going to happen on the 10 year anniversary and i'd love to hear what you guys think is happening for the 10 year anniversary so first of all to get into the video let's look back at what they have done in the past and i'm going to look specifically here at actual uh, compilation or album releases. So there was four actually that have happened in Monster Cat history for a certain anniversary. That was the third year, fifth year, eighth, and ninth. So on the third year anniversary, there was a 31 song compilation, but 30 of those songs were just reissued older stuff. It was essentially a best of Monster Cat album where they just, they just re-released all of the best songs or highest viewed songs on Monster Cat in order practically with a Didrik mix to top it all off. They did a super cool mashup that happened and yeah, that was the, uh, the three year anniversary. Then came along year five, the five year anniversary and we saw a another Didrik mix. Uh, it, this one wasn't actually released as an individual song, just a YouTube video this time, but we had a Didrik release that's kind of separate from the actual compilation and we saw a whole new album of actual original music, where it was 10 songs that were all originals, no remixes, no reissues of Monster Cat's biggest artists at the time. People like uh, Tristam, Mr. Fijiwiji, Laszlo, Pegboard Nerd, Stephen Walking, Afixa, it's all, tons of that kind of stuff. Uh, and there was one mega collaboration that happened between uh, five different artists. I think it was uh, Keepsake or Richard Caddock at the time. Uh, was it World, Slips and Slurs, Subtact I think was on it. And I don't think Hyper Potions was. I can't remember the last artist, but it was five songs. Um, and there was, uh, it was primarily no collaborations, though. It was just kind of primarily individuals other than the matches, and I think that one. And then Eight Year happened, uh, which was a little underwhelming. By the way, Five Year was my favorite by far. I loved the five year anniversary. It was so awesome. If they can do something similar or up it, I will lose my mind. Then Eight Year Anniversary came, and there was eight songs to go along with that. All of them were originals, and there was a lot of collaborations in those, but those felt a little underwhelming to me, and I think a lot of people shared the same sentiment of that as well. Uh, and then there was the Nine Year Anniversary, which was 90s themed. Uh, six songs uh, were reissued of older popular music. There was, there was essentially just covers. It was just six covers from Monster Cat artists of non Monster Cat artists songs from the 90s. Which brings us to right now. 2021, what will happen for the 10 year anniversary? So the way I wanna do this video is actually gonna be something interesting, uh, something that some of you may know, some of you may not, but here's how this works. It's gonna be called a 90-50-10. So the way this works is I will give three statements and I think 90% chance that this thing will happen, a 50% chance that this thing will happen and a 10% chance that that thing will happen. And so I'm gonna go through four of those and this is just gonna be about the format. So how many songs, all that kind of stuff. And then after that, we will dig into what artists I think will actually release and the likelihood of each of them releasing. So in terms of format, here's my first 90, 50, 10. I think there's a 90% chance there's going to be 10 songs. It's the 10 year anniversary and 10 songs. That makes a ton of sense. But that goes into my second part. I think there's a 50% chance there will actually be 20 songs because they did 10 songs for the five year anniversary. And I think Monster Cat wants to really go big with this one. So I think there's a 50% chance and almost potential that they actually do 20 songs. And finally, I think there's a 10% chance there is an actual album mix at the end. There hasn't been a ton of album mixes in the past. I don't think the five year anniversary even had its own YouTube release of the album mix, but I think a 10% chance an album, album mix will happen. Next one, 90-50-10. I think there's a 90% chance there will be multiple three plus artist collaborations. So just like, uh, was it Keep You on the eight year anniversary or something like um, uh, the mega collab on the five year anniversary, I think there will be at least two or multiple three plus artist collaborations. So not just two, but three, I think there'll probably be two or three three plus artist collaborations. Similar to what they did for the first three uncaged uh, compilations. So they had the, um, what was the drum and bass one, the future bass one, and the heavy mix one. The, what was it? Unity without you and, uh, I can't remember the last one. I can see it in my head. I'm forgetting about it and it doesn't matter. 
So, uh, there's also, I think, going to be a 50% chance there is all originals and no remixes. So, just because they do the kind of remix stuff back in, or they're going to, or they have in December, historically, I think there's a 50% chance that this 10-year anniversary will have no remixes whatsoever. And a 10% chance that there will be another 5-plus artist collaboration. They're going to do another big ultra collab. I think there's a 10% chance that that will happen. Next one, so those are the two 9050 tens. Next one, I think there's a 90% chance there will be one Silk release, one Silk artist on this compilation album, this 10 year anniversary, just because that would be kind of the last year, like that would be like a, a 2021 year in review was, obviously Silk was a big thing. And so I think there'll be just one singular Silk release song. Uh, I think there's a 50% chance we're gonna get another Didrik mix. So yeah, that's fairly simple. I think there's just a 50% chance we will get another Didrik mix. Uh, and I think there is a 10% chance that they will go by the year and do those 10 songs by year, if that makes sense. So 2011 will be a, or the first song will be a 2011 themed song or use the artist from back then. And then a 2012 and then a 2013, 14. I think there's a 10% chance they'll actually do it like that. That's what I thought they were gonna do for the eight year anniversary, but then they didn't quite. So like, I mean, for example, they wouldn't have uh, like Grant be the very first or second song. They would have it be like the fifth or sixth or something like that. And finally, my last 90, 50, 10, I think there's a 90% chance the first songs will be released in the week of June 14th to 18th. That just has enough lead up time. And because July 4th is actually on a Sunday, I think the last song will be released on the Friday beforehand. So I guess the second. Um, so I think we'll do three full weeks of releases is my guess. Uh, a 50% chance that there is no chance to be spoiled of the songs before they release on YouTube. That I, What I mean by that is I think they will release on YouTube and Spotify and SoundCloud and Apple Music everywhere simultaneously. They did that for the five-year anniversary where you actually couldn't go and see what, what the next release was going to be. It was hidden on Spotify until the actual minute that it was supposed to come out. And I think they will do the same thing where maybe it'll be released at like a 10 p.m. or sorry, 10 a.m. that day or something like that. Uh, so that's what I think will 50% chance it will happen. And finally, a 10% chance there will be a Glitch Hop song. Uh, we haven't seen a ton of Glitch Hop in recent years at Monster Cat, but there's actually uh, 100, more than 100 Glitch Hop songs in Ms. Monster Cat's discography. It is the eighth most represented genre, according to my stats. So I think there's 10% chance there. So uh, I would love to hear what you guys think in the comments below. What are your 90, 50, 10s? What do you think will happen? Now let's quickly get into the artists. What artists I think will be releasing on this album? And I have four categories here that I'm just going to list off on the screen here. I have for sure, likely, not likely, and next to impossible. And so I will quickly go over some of them and some of them don't need explanation. So first of all, and there's also, there's also no, no order to this. The way I was doing it in my sheet, just it was all over the place. I think for sure these people get releases. Uh, Pigboard Nerds, Stonebank, Muzz, Stephen Walking, Rogue, Tokyo Machine, Afixa, and Grant. I think those are my for sure. I would be shocked if any of them weren't on this compilation in some way or another. And the beautiful part about collaborations is that if there's a mega collab or something like that, an artist can just be on that and there can be, even if the song is, let's say, yeah, if it's 10 songs long, let's say, there can be like more than 20 artists that are actually featured on the project. And so we're not sure what it's gonna be like until we actually listen to it. Next, artists that I think are likely, so not for sure, but likely. I think Conroe, Mr. Fiji Ouija. I, I said Mr. Fiji Ouija unlikely not for sure because he's in school right now and she's working a ton on that. But he just came out with a tweet before I was filming this video that said that he's got a new song from 2021 coming out and I think it's gonna be the one that is this one uh, for this album. So I would probably move him up to for sure now. Uh, but I also think Coven, uh, Direct, AU5, Vice Tone, Slippy, Kuro, Infected Mushroom, Fool, Ramesses B, Noise Storm, Laszlo, Half an Orange, Dumu, Nitro Fun, Pixel Terror, Protostar, Faint, Bad Computer, Bishu, Dion Timmer, Varian, which I think Varian might be almost 100% now because uh, she also said that she was releasing a, or had a master, a pre-master going to Monster Cat, and so I think... I think Varian will have a release, almost for sure, I think, at this point, but it's it's still likely, I think. Uh, Eminence, Cloud Nun, and Boss Fight. So there are a, lo a lot of artists there. So just the artists in For Sure and Likely, that fills up way than enough spots to actually put out this compilation. So there's just a ton there. I'm also only going over artists that I think had 20 or more releases of all time on Monster Cat, and a few that didn't had a kind of sprinkled in that I think maybe should be noted. 
Uh, now, not likely. Artists, I think, are not likely to release here. I would be quite shocked if they actually were. Uh, Helberg, he's been doing a ton of other stuff. Uh, not really Monster Cat. Tut Tut Child hasn't done a ton right now. Fractal hasn't done a ton. Gammer, I don't think, is as... Um, big of a Monster Cat icon as some of the other artists are. Uh, Gravitz is doing a ton of his own stuff right now. Puppet's also doing a ton of his own stuff. Haven't seen a ton from World lately. Uh, Drop Tech, again, I don't think is as big of a Monster Cat icon as some of the others are. Project 46 is doing a lot of their own stuff right now. Seven Minutes Dead, No Taker, Resonate. Uh, and the most interesting one, I think, Riot. So there's this thing a while ago which happened around the same time that the uh, Arrow Chord uh, stuff came out that um, Riot was also kind of pushed away from the from Monster Cat. They weren't in playlists anymore. Their artist thing came down off of the website. It was really weird. And here's my thing about Riot. If Riot does appear on this compilation, which I think they would if there wasn't some weird background stuff happening, I think uh, they will be releasing, obviously, a lot more Monster Cat in the future. But if we don't see a Riot release on this compilation, I think we will never see Riot again. It's been swept under the rug. We are none the wiser, us as an audience, and I think we will just never hear from Riot on Monster Cat again. That is my prediction if we don't get a Riot on this release. Uh, okay, so also not likely, I don't think Rootkit, Throttle, Draper, Darren Styles, Xylent, Mazer, and Nigel Good. And here I think is the most interesting one to look at, the next to impossible, artists I think are next to impossible to show up. Number one, Tristam. Yeah, sadly, I don't think Tristam is going to be here in any capacity. Uh, for the five-year anniversary, he was the most sought after or wanted song in there, but I just think things have changed. They've took out his songs from the discography. They're just removing his stuff from Spotify. It's just all Monster or Tristam branding now instead of Monster Cap. So no, no Tristam. I think sadly we won't see it. If he does, I will be... So thrilled. I'll be so happy. I think they should put aside any of their musical differences just to do it as part of, uh, just for the fans, in my opinion, but there's a ton of politics, I'm sure, behind the scenes. Uh, and with that, Haywire is similar. Haywire has the same uh, manager, I think is what it is, uh, Pero, I think is his name. And so Haywire's on the same, where like Twofold Part 1 isn't even on the website anymore, and that's like an iconic Monster Cat compilation or album. And so I don't necessarily agree with it, but I don't think Haywire or Tristan will either be on because of other political stuff. Uh, Astronaut, I don't think will be on uh, this at all either, just because they were doing their own stuff. Uh, Karma Fields, I don't think it's next to impossible that he'd be there. There's a ton of controversy behind his songs, or I wouldn't say controversy, but a lot of people didn't love his songs right away. I think Karma Fields should be on it, but I don't think so. Uh, Televisor, uh, we've seen almost nothing from them recently, so I don't think they'll be on here at all. And finally, Slander, with just their uh, new uh, record label and all that kind of stuff that's going on with there. I just don't think we'll see them at all. So, that has been my predictions for the 10-year anniversary. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know the 90-50-10s. 90% 90 chance you think something will happen, 50% chance you think something will happen, and a 10% chance you think something will happen. Let me know in the comment section below. I would love to keep these discussions going there. And uh, yeah, I'm excited for the 10-year anniversary, and we'll see how much of this I get wildly right, which will be probably nothing, because I will most likely get it all wildly wrong, and I hope so. So, I've been Bowtied Media, and I will see you guys in another video.